The Victorian high country is like nothing I've ever seen before in Australia. Imagine four wheel driving and camping at over a thousand metres above sea level for eight days with plenty of amazing scenery, some close calls and awesome weather. That's That's not good. But in an environment we are so unfamiliar with and definitely under equipped for. But ever since I've known the Australian high country existed, I couldn't wait to get there myself. Let's get into it. Uh, so we're coming at you with another episode. We are doing a high country episode in Victoria. We're with one of my cousins. I'm not exactly sure what specific tracks we're doing. We just dropped the tires down to about 20 psi, uh, just because it is pretty uh, like whoopy almost. Uh, not whoopy. Bumpy. Just, just bumpy. So it's just made it a lot smoother. So now the track that we're actually on was called Circuit Road, and then now we're actually going on the track up to Craig's Hut. So I've just pulled up to Craig's hut now, I'm gonna go for a look and then it's on to the next track I think. The view's also been pretty cool. You should be able to see, hopefully through the trees here, how nice the view is and also how steep the track's getting. We continue our ascent up into the mountains and then not even three hours into our trip, we run into our first issue. Hey Alex, do you wanna see something funny? <laughs> no idea what has happened. That's hilarious. We inspected it to make sure nothing had punctured the tyre. Couldn't find anything, so we inflated it to road driving pressure. To make sure that it holds pressure and then when we get on the track I can let it back down again. So we went for a quick walk to Bindery Falls. It was really nice, so we'll roll the footage now. Get the speaker box loud, hitting that stuff till you hear that sound. We're going to the 16 mile Jeep track now. Normally when something's called a Jeep track, I feel like it's actually a proper track. So excited to see how that goes. And our first little river crossing in the high country, it's tiny, but kind of photogenic. So we'll show you. A bit rocky. And I'm in high range as well. So this is getting out of here. Yeah, I don't even know. And now we enter the 16 mile Jeep track straight after that. So we wrapped up that Jeep track and now onto bluff track. It's a bit drier, a bit more rocky, but it's just super steep. Obviously, I'm assuming we're just going up to the top of the mountain we're on. So we check off our first day in the Victorian high country. We haven't tackled too many hard obstacles yet, but it's a good intro to the high country for us. And our confidence is building for when we tackle some harder tracks solo in the next few days. And I'm very excited to see what comes next. So we're into our second day of the high country and then we're hitting like, I think it was like five tracks. Oh, there's pretty cool clouds out there. You might be able to see them on the roof. So we continue making our way through the mountains, crossing the rivers countless times. Uh, Alex is gonna cross first. So you'll see him on camera going across. And then my cousin just got unlucky. Oh really? We spend the next 30 minutes getting Marty changing off his spare, getting ready to tackle some more tracks. So we're like part way through uh, on the track to Cobbler Lake. Uh, and we're at this like pretty cool viewing spot, so I thought I'd show you quickly. Are you ready for the Just pulled up at a part of the track to show you how steep some of the sections are on the way to Cobbler Lake. You can see here, that's the car, that's the track. The steep angle. This is the return of the one. You ain't see him coming, you just heard drums. They've been ready for the battle, any person that comes got the weight of the world on them, yeah, they're too strong. So we've driven out of that section of the high country and we're on our way to like Mount Hotham area. And um, we're going to the Billy Goat Bluff track and the Crooked River track and then whatever tracks in between that connect us. So we we're just on the Dargo road and we got kind of bored of driving for today. So we've set up camp and um, we'll show you the campsite. Let's chill in there. Got my terrible fire going, which I need to put more wood on. That's the view. Good morning, and welcome to another day in the high country. And we're on the Jeff Spur track. The view's absolutely awesome so far. As we continue making our way down the track, it seems to be deteriorating more and more. And we're left wondering if we're actually going to make it to the bottom. 
I don't have the clearance for this. <laughs> that's, that's not good. So we just come up to this massive washout. Gonna be pretty slippery. Oh my god, that was my everything. Attempt number two, there's no way around it, so we have to go through it. It was just going on like the, I know, like the cross member just around the transmission. I'm just gonna hug it as far right as I can. Am I good? Oh, that was the full bar. Oh, all the bars got to work out there. Maybe I should have got a three inch and body. We continue our descent down into the valley, scraping our chassis on every second obstacle until one lapse in judgment left us completely stuck. Done a mischief here. We are pretty stuck on the chassis rail. Holy. <laughs> I'm pretty far off foreground, so I just put rocks in. I'll get the max tracks if this doesn't work. Mm. I've got the max tracks. Yeah, so we're pretty stuck. Uh, I'm going to need to get the max tracks off the roof now. And I'll show you what we've done. You can see. We are like a seesaw. I do have one idea. Laura might be able to jump up and down on the back. Yeah, so we're just bottomed out here. And I'm gonna get the maxis and hopefully that fixes it straight away. Hopefully this time we will get out. Going for reverse. So I've now tried forward and reverse. Neither of them have worked, so I'm gonna get the ax out and hopefully be able to chip away at some of the clay that we're stuck on. So at this stage, we knew we were well and truly stuck. We spent an hour and a half digging, Wang. chipping away, drilling into the clay, trying to just get enough room to make it wobble. Not having a winch in this situation means there isn't much you can do, but we had one last good idea. 300th time, Loz is gonna give us some bounce. We are stuck. Yep. At this point, we were defeated. We knew we were going to have to stay here overnight and dig late into the night, and then hopefully in the morning, we'd be able to get our way out. And then from down the valley, we heard someone coming. So some legends just came and helped us. You're going to see the clip now. That's it. Absolutely nicest blokes. Had a winch, helped us out, and we got over. They pulled us this far and then just drove out the rest of it pretty much. Uh, and then I got over the next one, which was even bigger. Without needing anything, just gave some momentum and they were good. But now we have to drive 200 meters down the river, which I'm pretty excited for. Can't say I've ever done this before. Right now we are driving just through a river, not across a river, straight through. Ooh. I'm just walking this bit where he said the bog was, the super deep hole. I obviously don't want to fall in that. Oh my God, it's so cold. Just make sure we go the right way. So after four hours, we finally get to wrap up our first track of the day. As we come up out of the river, we get onto the Crooked River track, where we'll get to cross the river 25 times. Super steep, pretty ledgy. I'm trying to pick my line. I also can't really see how the windscreen, because we ran out of windscreen right before. Go you, good thing. Go on. See there, pretty big step to my shin. Oh, almost to my knee. I'm not gonna keep showing you every single river crossing. And the last one we went through was real deep and this one looks like it's gonna be deeper again. It wasn't as high as it feels up to there. 
Now we're making pretty good progress, but there's one last river crossing between us, one of the high country's most famous and steep tracks. <laughs> We've now finally made it, the Billy Goat Bluff track. It's almost impossible to do justice how steep this track is. It's definitely something you have to do it yourself to really understand how steep it is. going to put into a bit better perspective of the track. That's where we just came down, down there. That over there is the rest of the track. Yeah, so that wasn't too hard, but... So we continue our ascent of over a thousand meters to the top of the Billy Goat Bluff track. When you reach the summit, you've got views from over 1,450 meters above sea level. After driving along the ridge line for no longer than five minutes, we're straight back down into it. So we're now in some muddy, shitty track trying to get out. I don't think this track goes for that far, but it's just connecting us between two tracks. At this point we could basically smell the exit, but the bog holes just kept coming and the mud wouldn't stop. So now we're finally getting up out of the mud. Don't really like the mud. Big old bog hole. Finally getting up out of the mud. Um, and I'm gonna get a stick and try and stab it. It goes around the corner as well. Just into this big bog hole. I'm gonna go kind of slow. Feel for the traction. No, it's really nothing. It just looks scary because it was on a corner. And then just like that, we pop out onto a main track and then eventually a main road. If you like this video, hit subscribe and then drop a like as well because why not?